All right, guys. Well, I got a um, Insignia DVD player. That's uh, portable. Yeah. And uh, I took apart the battery. And the backing case is here, and then that's where it hooks onto on the back. Uh, I took the wires loose. I split them here to test the battery voltage and whatnot. Um, this is the original casing that went around the batteries. I cut it, took them off, and this is what they look like when you disc when you take the. I just got a text message, but. Well, you take the plastic covering off, and there's also uh, green plastic covering on these as well. So I already got them taken off and everything. But they look pretty much like this, and they're connected together. Actually, that should be like this. I marked them. That's negative. As you can tell, the whole casing around it is negative. And uh, this side would actually be positive because it's has a circle around it. It's like this one, but the little covering went bad or something. I don't know what happened to it, but uh, I got this one. This cell right, oh, this whole cell right here registers like 2.66 volts, 2.6. And uh, there's actually supposed to be nine volts. Uh, the, well, the charger is actually nine volts, but it, it would only charge up to about 5.6 three 5.4 volts altogether with all these cells so I found uh, two bad cells um, this whole cell right here one of these batteries in this cell was bad completely and uh, so I took one from each uh, whole cell like right here and uh, found out that there was a good cell in, in each one so there's supposed to be three of these long ones here but I found a good one in each one, uh, except for this one was all good. So what I got here is uh, some uh, AA batteries, pretty much. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're NIMH and so is these, uh, except them ones are a little bit bigger, as you can tell. But these have 1.3 volts each, just it's not as many milliamps, but I want to try to make them work. You know, even if the DVD player only lasts like, an hour and a half or so. I mean, that's, that's about as good as what a movie lasts, so if I can get that much more life of it, out of it, well, you know, whatever. And I'm just doing this to, just for the hell of it. Anyway, so, uh, what I'm going to do here is actually take these and put some wire in between these and solder them together. And so, uh, with these ones as well here too, solder them together. And then go ahead and connect them in uh, series to make uh, roughly about 9 volts. At least that's what uh, this thing here says it's supposed to have. No, it's over here. Yeah, 9 volts are. So. I'm not sure if the battery is supposed to be exactly 9 volts. I never tested it before it went, you know, haywire, but uh, I would imagine it had to be close to that. But it will run on the bad cells at like 5.5 volts when I charged it manually because the DVD player wouldn't charge it because, you know, I figured out it was a bad cell, blah, blah, blah. But uh, it wouldn't charge, so I charged it manually with my PC power supply here, but it would only charge to about five and a half volts or so so a couple of cells were bad you know these are the cells here but um i'm gonna go ahead and sort of them up together and uh give it a charge and uh get back to you here in just a few minutes all right guys well i um got the, all these batteries soldered together so we know this one is actually rated at uh, about 2.6 or 2.66 so those cells in there are good and um, like I said they were wrapped around in the in the some green stuff and actually this isn't rated at 9 volts it's actually rated at 7.2 at around 
1700 milliamps to 3400 milliamps. So, actually, we're only looking for 7.2, and I've added all these batteries together, and they actually add up to about 7.6 ish uh, with these new batteries I put in. Uh, they probably don't have the right milliamps, but uh, at least it's going to give it the right volts. It might not last as long as it should. But uh, it'll definitely work and take a charge again, or at least it should. But uh, we're going to set that there. Come in behind here. Here and test it. See, them, one, them ones are giving about 2.5. But them ones haven't been charged in a long time. They came out of like a phone battery. Like a... Uh, home phone battery charger, home phone battery, wireless. Um, here we go. Here's here's this one here that I redid. Uh, come on. There we go, about 2.65. And the other ones, uh, this one here is 2.66. So uh, I'm going to connect all them three in parallel. I'm going to connect all three of them in parallel and then uh, go ahead and put them back in its original casing. And, uh, well, I probably won't put this back on it. I'll probably just wrap it in some electrical tape. But what you want to do with these is uh, if you find a bad cell in one of these when you uh, take it apart, you want to go, uh, see this is negative and this is positive. So you want to go positive to negative, or, or if this is negative, you want to go to positive. You never want to connect it positive to positive, or else that would just, um, it would be the same volts, but it would be more amps, pretty much. Uh, so you always, you always want to uh, do this in parallel, or no, um, yeah, well... You just want to connect them together, positive, negative, negative, positive. So, like if I got this here, this would be positive. If this was negative, I would go positive, negative. This would be positive, negative, positive over here on this other side. So, you would put all the volts together and it would uh, you know, end up being about 7 volts or so. So uh, I want to get doing that, and uh, I'll get back to you. Well, I've got it all hooked up now, and I black taped everything and hot glued the connections so that to make sure they stay on. I'm pretty sure they will, because I used a lot of flux, uh, and a lot of solder. But um, they're all up in here, all black taped. And, you know, they go into this thing here, and I got the screws for it. Right in here, that uh, screws this piece to this piece. I just got it connected here just, just to uh, test it real quick. I got the uh, connections in, soldered in, and black taped, and uh, the batteries are in. And I've, I've already tested it. I, I know I should have tested it before I uh, plugged it everything in and soldered everything in, but... Uh, uh, it reads about 7.6 to 7.8 or so, but uh, I want to disconnect the power, even though it's not even plugged in. It's somewhere around here, right here. It's just a universal junk charger that I'm using, a uh, 9 volt charger. But uh, here we go. I mean, that's pretty much what it is, and it's connected to them batteries. Hit the little power button on the side. Look at that. This is actually the first time I've turned it on, actually, uh, when I did this video. So I'm, I'm not sure what it's going to do. But uh, so far, it's uh, working perfect. There you go. Fast forward. 
Fast forward, turn the volume up maybe. Fast forward. Fast forward. So yeah. I think we got her fixed. There's a couple dead cells in the battery pack. And uh, hell, I fixed them with uh, uh, a phone battery pack. Um, show you here in a second. I got this little Twix can of here. Just one of these batteries right here. I just, they're, they're uh, AA batteries. This one here is registered at uh, 2.4 volts for both batteries. That's pretty much what I just used. They're just AA batteries, and, you know, I just soldered them in, found out, found the bad cells with the uh, multimeter here, took the bad cells out, and uh, I've already threw them in the trash. Uh, I'm not sure where they're at in there. Oh, here's one. Ah, crap. Yeah. Well, I just had it, but, uh, yeah. There you are. Just uh, replace the bad cells in the battery pack and uh, you'll be uh, good to go.